I have learned so much, even in the past week, about my injuries and about my training and a possible new perspective about how to hit the reset and how to take my training to the next level. But before I share it with you, I have to take an ice shower, but it is part of the process. Wish me luck. And the cold showers are just the start of it. You see, to explain fully, what I have to do is take you back to yesterday when I went to see a Spanish physiotherapist called Angel who gave me a completely different perspective on my training, on my injury history, and kind of how I can reset everything and take my training to the next level and finally get rid of this chronic set of injuries that I've been having. It was a something... I'd never looked at it this way and it absolutely blew my mind and so I want to share it with you. Angel thinks that thanks to my chronic injury issues my body's in a state of chronic fatigue and stress where it's borrowing energy to repair these injuries from my body's connective tissues and muscles which of course causes more injury and the only way to stop this vicious cycle is to shock the body out of it and look to remove stress and inflammation almost like pressing the reset button and that starts with the diet less processed carbs like pasta and rice and more potato less red meat and more white meat or even veggie meals and an increase in anti-inflammatory foods like fish and nuts. If you're wondering what I'm up to getting in the car with food, I am earning myself a year's supply of husband points by taking the meal to Mary who's so busy at work that she couldn't come home for it. And when I say I've earned myself a year of um, husband points, I probably am actually not even in credit still. This is one of the more ridiculous things I've ever done, to be honest. Full meal. But diet is just the first step in this approach, and it's an approach that's called PNI, or psychoneuroimmunology. Psycho, meaning behavior, neuro, nerves, immunology, as in the immune system. And it's saying that there is a link between your behavior and your immune response, as in the immune system is not autonomous. And what autonomous means is that it works alone, independent of outside factors. What this is actually saying is that your behavior, your mood can affect your immune response. So stress, chronic injury, depression, things like this can actually increase your inflammatory response in your body. And that can lead to systemic anti-inflammatory feedback. So what does that mean? The easiest way for me to demonstrate what that means is using my faithful companion Winnie and a concept called a Pavlovian response. I don't know if this is gonna work by the way, but we'll give it a shot. They say never work with animals or children, but I'm gonna go one better than that. I'm working with a deaf animal, so I've no idea how this is gonna work, but in essence, what the Pavlovian response is, is uh, comes from a guy called Pavlov who had a group of dogs that he conditioned. When he rang a bell, then he would feed them, you see, and what he did eventually is that he just rang a bell and didn't give them food, but they would still salivate. It's called a Pavlovian response. It's a physical response to an external stimulus. And I'm gonna try and demonstrate that with Winnie. There's only one way I can do that is by potentially introducing cheese and us seeing if she licks her lips, which is the start of salivation. The problem is she's now actually eating her breakfast. But we'll give this a go. So I've got a handful of cheese here. Winnie. Here we go, she's coming over. Sit. Look, can you see her licking her lips? <laughs> Ready? Good girl.
All right, that was a bad demonstration really, but what I was trying to get at is that my body and perhaps yours, if you've been going through injury or stress or whatever, is conditioned now. It's in this cycle where at the first sign of stress or depression or long-term injury, the inflammatory response overcooks it. Because an inflammatory response is needed when you're injured in the first few days and weeks, but not necessarily very much after that. And certainly you don't need it when you're stressed and you don't need it when you're depressed. But because we're in this cycle, I certainly am in this cycle, every time any of these happen, my body has an, an inflammatory response. So how do we press control, alt, delete, reset, get out of this vicious cycle that we're in, I'm in? It's by introducing lots and lots of manageable but mini shocks, other stresses that the body is not used to. For example, as I demonstrated earlier, cold showers two, three, four times a week. That's a shock that my body's not used to. What about last week I introduced myself to cryotherapy before I even knew that it was part of this approach, but shocking the body into really, really low temperatures is another way of trying to break this cycle. What else can we do to try and break this cycle, introduce mini shot? Well, you could, conversely to the freezing cold, introduce heat. So if you have access to a sauna or a hot tub, then things like that are sending you the other way. You know, you're increasing your temperature out of your comfort zone more than perhaps you would do usually. So sauna, hot tub, brilliant ideas. How about training? Well. I was advised that maybe instead of my long, easy sessions, I go for short, really hard sessions that are gonna really hurt and stress me, but in a different way. So like interval sessions, or I did a race on Strava. And you can even combine those stresses for a short amount of time. So Angel said if it was a really warm day, go out and do an interval session, really push your temperature high, which is crazy. But it's all about breaking this conditioned response to stress by introducing different stresses. We can also mess about with our diet for a little bit. Angel suggested that I fast for 13 hours. And when you think about it, 13 hours is a long time, but not when you put a big sleep in the middle of it. So the suggestion was for me that perhaps I eat my last meal of the day at six, seven o'clock and I don't eat again until seven or eight o'clock the next morning. That's a comfortable 13 hours that is manageable. And I had healthy pancakes this morning at gone eight o'clock having had my last meal at seven o'clock yesterday. I guess my hope is that with the introduction of a different diet to reduce inflammation and then introducing all of these micro stresses, I would call it, or micro stresses into my life, like the heat and the cold and the interval sessions and the fasting, that I break this loop that I'm in, that I break this pattern, this cycle of injury, stress, injury, stress, and inflammation, and therefore I stop borrowing energy from my connective tissues, from my muscles, and that eventually will lead to my body resetting and being able to take me to the next level. And even if you're not injured, but let's say you're stressed in a job or in life or that you're depressed, then this is definitely something that can help you take yourself to the next level or break a Pavlovian cycle of condition response that you're in. Hey, I mean, we're all looking for the next gain, right? We're all looking for that next step, the thing that can take us onto the next level. And this might just be it. We're always looking to smash through plateaus or glass ceilings or whatever you want to call it. This might be the way, just introducing manageable but micro shocks, control alt delete, here we go, next level. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to give it a go. I've been told that it could take three to six weeks to see any type of a result, but I'm willing to put in that graft over this holiday. I should probably introduce this little disclaimer that I am not saying shock the body in a thousand different ways as many times as you can. That would not be sensible. It has to be a gradual introduction of stresses and safely doing it. So a few cold showers a week, one or two saunas of 20 minutes or 15 minutes a week, fasting three times a week, not every night, not all of the time. Introduce these gradually and safely and your body will be able to accept it too much and it'll probably cause another stress and that will pop it back into the feedback loop. So be sensible with what you're doing.
It's exciting. Hopefully you'll follow along on the journey. You might even try it. If you haven't already joined the Facebook group, I've set up a group now rather than a page so that we can all interact, all chat. It's this messy, happy triathlon and running or running and triathlon. I can't remember which one, but come and join the group, be part of the conversation, and we can discuss things like this. By the time you watch this, I'll be in the Isle of Wight on my holiday, and I'm gonna make a video about that. It's exciting, right? See you Tuesday.